Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to litter train your guinea pig. So here are the items you're going to need. The first thing is um, you're going to need a litter tray of some kind. So this is just a cat litter tray. You don't want it to be too tall that the guinea pigs can't jump into. If you've got older guinea pigs, a litter tray is just really not going to work because, you know, they're not able to jump as high. They may have arthritis. so. This may not be the best thing for you, but if you have younger guinea pigs under, you know, four years old, then this may still work for you. But you can always pack like bricks and stuff to make a, it a lot easier to get into the litter box if needed. So a litter box, you can find these at Walmart or any place. This one was at Walmart for, I think, five or six dollars. And um, this one's like three years old. And I don't use it anymore because I have, um, I got newer ones just because they're prettier, but this lasts a long time. They may chew around the edges a little bit so you may have to change it out but um, mine typically they may chew a little bit but I don't have an issue with them actually ripping pieces off so the next item you're, um, this makes cleanup a lot easier so what I use is newspaper in the bottom so I'll just line the bottom of the paper uh, the litter box with this because um, as you'll see later it'll make cleanup a lot easier the next item you'll need is some sort of um, litter base. So you can use um, paper or wood pellets. I use wood pellets. You can find these at um, any, like I found this at Lowe's, and they are kind of hard to find, especially in the south. Um, there's one area in Knoxville, Tennessee that has them, but um, like I have to drive over, you know, about two hours to get these. So um, my parents live there. That's where I'm originally from. So anytime I'm in town, I buy like three bags. But um, you want to make sure that any litter, um, wood-based litter that you get, that it doesn't have accelerant in it. And these don't. Um, Lowe's told me themselves, the managers, that it's literally just wood in pellets. And um, I did research, and that's fine too. Um, but you want to make sure there's not a strong smell. So these really don't smell at all. Um, you definitely, so just keep an eye out for that. It, you don't want to get um, like cedar, but it's going to be very pungent because um, it's going to, you know, could hurt the respiratory system. And you don't want, you want to make sure it's not going to turn into a ton of powder and be everywhere because again, that would hurt the respiratory system too. So, um, you also could use that carefree, I'm probably wrong, but it's um, it's that paper, crumpled up paper type stuff. That stuff can also work too, but I prefer the wood pellets because it masks the smell over time and it lasts a bit longer than um, any of the litter I've tried before. Next item, I put hay on top of mine because it encourages them to go in there. And I also have a hay rack that I put above the litter box because they tend to poop and pee when they eat. So, um, and the last thing you'll need is some treats. So you can just, um, I would suggest using vegetables as treats, not the ones you buy in the store. Just fresh treats is the best thing. That's the only thing I ever really feed my guinea pigs for treats. Or if they have some favorite like hay or something, you can always do that too. So let's get started. Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how I put my litter tray together. So the first thing is, I take some newspaper, and you can have it about, about four sheets thick. It just makes cleanup a lot easier when it's thicker. And I'm going to fold it about part way right in here, just to where it fits in the bottom perfectly. Next is, I have a container of my wood pellets, and I just bought a doggy scoop, and I put about three to four scoops in this just to where it covers the bottom. I don't fill it up high because again, I change mine every three to four days and the wood pellets are going to expand when they get wet. So I don't want it to fill up so high in a few days from expansion that you know it pretty much pushes the poop and everything else out. So I just take four, three to four scoops. thing I just lay some hay over and you can use Timothy hay or true grass hay whatever hay you like best Timothy hay 
tends to um, keep it a lot drier in here, whereas orchard grass hay just adheres to all the wetness. So I just put a layer in here to cover the bottom. And what I do every morning and afternoon is if the guinea pigs um, have soiled this, I just take this, the layer off, and put a fresh layer on when needed. Okay, so now let's get started on training the pigs. Okay guys, so here's how this works. What you wanna do is um, you wanna first get your guinea pigs to drink a lot of water, so I would suggest taking them out of the cage, feeding them treats, giving them some water, and um, then you're going to um, put them in the litter box and you're gonna kind of barricade them in. And of course, as soon as I, before I start this video, all of mine decide to jump in at once. So um, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just try it out. So what I have is an extra, um, one of these grid cages. I forgot to add that into the things you'll need. And I'm just gonna block them in. So kind of just barricade them in. Um, and you can use other things as well. But this is just to keep them in there and make sure that they use the bathroom. So you're just gonna sit here and um, it may take a while. I'm gonna tell you it's gonna take a while. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna watch them and as soon as, like if you watched your guinea pigs enough, you recognize signs that they're using the bathroom. So, you know, they, they back up into a corner and they squat you know they kind of squat they're behind and they pee and sometimes you know even pooping it's kind of hard to see that too because they just kind of poop as they go but as soon as you see them do that you give them a treat and you continue to do this over a period of time so you give them a break let them run around the cage and then you give them you know you try it again so you just keep doing this eventually they'll catch on and here's the disclaimer I want to share with you is um, not all guinea pigs are going to be able to be litter trained a hundred percent. Okay, I have yet to tra train mine a hundred percent. I ended up giving up because this one right here is too smart for his own good. Here's what he would do. He would trick me, so anytime I came over to the cage, he would run to his litter box and pretend to use the bathroom. I'm, I'm not even kidding. He would kind of back up into the corner and then immediately run to me. So he did not have enough time to pee, but he would back up into the corner and then run to me on the edge of the litter box and beg for a treat. I'm not even joking. So again, and so eventually I just gave up because he wasn't doing it. So, um, cause he became too smart. So what, um, mine do still poop around cause there's some right there, but Here's the key to, in a way, litter training your guinea pigs. I always provide hay in their litter box and a hay rack. And typically, wherever guinea pigs eat is where they're gonna poop and pee. So the majority of their messes are in the litter box, okay? That cuts down a lot of the um, issues that I have of poop and pee everywhere. But also, they're going to pee and poop in their hideys. So I haven't cleaned their cage this morning, and so there is some poop there. So what I do is I made some um, of these potty pads, and there's a link below of how I made them, a tutorial. So this is what I use to prevent me from having to change their cage more than once a week, okay? Um, now obviously if there was an accident, like there is a huge, like let's say, I try and put potty pads under water bottles because occasionally they will end up um, leaking sometimes. Like there have been times where um, like sometimes the janitors help me out and if it's like halfway down, what they'll do is they'll go and fill it up and occasionally they don't tighten it and it ends up going all over the cage. So what I do is I provide potty pads under them. So if it does happen, I can easily change the potty pad in the morning with a fresh one and it hasn't affected my actual fleece. So um, <clears throat> that is a way I work with it. And um, so again, let me go over that again. Guinea pigs are most likely not 100% trainable. They're not like rabbits, okay? They're gonna do their own thing. And um, so I provide hay in the litter box with a 
hay rack above and I change in the morning. This is, I haven't changed it this morning, but I change the hay in the morning and afternoon. So I pick out all that hay and put fresh hay down to prevent, you know, them eating soiled hay. And I find that Timothy hay is the best to be put into the litter box because it's a lot drier and whereas orchard grass hay really soaks up and it's a little wetter anyway so it doesn't um, do a good job with um, keeping the area dry so um, and they will pee and poop where in their hideys so I provide potty pads and this and I change them whenever needed they get pretty wet and this prevents me from changing the cage more than once a week so again if there is a need to change the cage one, more than once a week than I do. But I change the litter boxes maybe um, every three to four days. Sometimes I won't have to do it for a week or so. Um, this litter box down here is an actual cage, a guinea pig cage that I got um, with my uh, uh, Pets in the Classroom grant. They had, it was, there was a coupon for a cage and I knew I wasn't going to use it for actual for them to be in so I bought it it was I got it for like half off so like 15 20 dollars and I first used it as a um, to carry them places like if I needed to take them to the bed or I needed you know I was taking them on a trip to my parents house that's two hours away I would put them in something like this but then I just decided to use it as a litter box because I have four guinea pigs in one cage so it just greatly helped having a huge cage and not having to change several several litter trays so I wanted to show you what their cage looks like after um, a day of wear and tear on it after I cleaned it so this is the morning after and there was a hidey hut here so they've done a little bit of poop here but pretty much through other parts is you don't really see much I mean there's some in that little corner and you've got some here and then this is probably the dirtiest area of the cage and I have to change this potty pad quite often but they've got a big hidey hut here so this is where they're peeing and, and pooping in the hidey hut and then there's a little bit here where their um, water bottle is but again my the girls in Carmel do a majority of their business in the um, litter boxes so However, it's a different story for the boys, and I didn't think, I had already, you know, I've already swept this cage, but um, the boys do a lot, like there's a Heidi hut that's here, and there's a, always a ton of poops here, there's some back here, but they're, the main problem with cleaning their cage is they love to hide in the hay, so what they'll do is they'll get under the hay and it ends up all over the cage. So there's usually like a ton of hay here, and then there's a ton of hay right in here. So, um, but they kind of just, I mean, they still use the um, litter box a lot, but there is sometimes a, a lot of hay. And, and two, if there's hay out here all over the ground, then they're gonna sit and eat and poop there too. So um, that's why I usually accumulate a lot of poop in these areas. But otherwise, adding litter boxes, I find is a definite plus in helping me with keeping the cage cleaner and it my fleece will actually last longer so I changed the their cage and litter boxes on Monday and today is Wednesday morning so it's about two days later and I just picked up all the hay and um, as you can see in this litter box of the boys they have just done they've just soiled this area so sometimes when that happens and it looks because this is looking pretty bad I will just change that section and continue going on again this is just day two usually it gets to day four sometimes and then I'll eventually change the whole thing but sometimes I just spot clean whereas this one is not it's all over kind of soiled it's not just one spot and this is the one that they hide under so this one always gets a lot dirtier all together so um, this is just day two so here's what day four kind of looks like with the litter trays. So this is about how I want to get it. All of this in here is soaking wet and I mean there is a few spots that still has, you know, whole of these but um, this back in here is pretty much soaked to the core. So now I'm going to show you how 
um, it's going to look when I change it. So because I have newspaper in the bottom, it's going to make changing this a lot easier because it's going to fall out all at once. This is what it's going to look like. Just put it in the trash. And when it falls out, it falls all in one. And it's very, very clean. So there's really not much. You just go through with um, your vinegar and water solution and clean all this out, disinfect it, and you'll be good to go. Super simple. So um, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions for other users, please feel free to comment down below. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.